want to move into some of the arthropods. You want to think of these maybe as insects of the ocean. And this particular insect is the most common insect, even though it's not an insect, it's an arthropod, in the ocean. I want you to remember what this organism looks like because it's one of the most important members of what we call the zooplankton or the animal plankton in the ocean. Let me introduce you to a copepod. Copepods are crustaceans, just like crabs, and they're members of the phylum Arthropoda. This little animal with its shell and its two antennae and its little hands, if you want to think about it that way, is the most numerous crustacean in the world ocean. These copepods feed upon phytoplankton, at least larger phytoplankton, and they provide a link in the food web from phytoplankton to fishes. So understanding fisheries productivity really comes down to also understanding the nature of these organisms, how they survive and reproduce, how they feed and eat, and those kinds of things. So take a look at this picture carefully, look it up in Wikipedia, take a look at the slides, and become familiar with a copepod. Because, again, if you've ever been to the beach and ever swallowed water, you've swallowed a copepod before. Shame on you. This is a shrimp-like organism called a krill. This is, happens to be a krill that lives in the polar oceans, an Antarctic krill. We also find krill off of our shore and we find krill in the Arctic as well. They're not quite a shrimp. They're different enough from shrimp that puts them in a slightly different grouping, but they are a very abundant organism and they're extremely important in polar ecosystems. Krill are what you'll find feeding on phytoplankton, mostly phytoplankton that we find in ice, what are called ice algae, and krill will go along the undersides of the ice and graze, and then these krill provide an important food source for other larger organisms like fishes, but also baleen whales. Extremely important organism. In fact, because we've now decimated populations of fish and whales in the ocean, some countries are now fishing for krill, and there's actually people starting to eat krill. So our hopes of watching fishery stocks and uh, whaling stocks recover are being diminished somewhat by the fact that we're now eating what they eat, krill. We're actually competing with them. So there's some people that have some issues with that. And as the polar ice caps melt, the long-term survivability of these organisms and their population dynamics are going to be very important because without that ice, which is what they feed on, the, the algae that form on the underside of the sea ice, these guys feed on that. Without that ice, these guys have nothing to feed on. And so on up the food web, as krill die away, everything that feeds on krill die away. And in polar ecosystems, krill are the central character. Just like copepods are the central character for other types of pelagic ecosystems, krill are the main guys for polar ecosystems, for the survival of whales and penguins and all those things, happy feet, that we love about the Arctic. Polar bears, too. So another one that you'll want to recognize. Here is a barnacle, and this is a close-up of a barnacle. This might be about the size of a quarter. Barnacles are also crustaceans. They're also arthropods. And if you look really carefully in this figure here, you can see little tiny barnacles that have just settled down. Barnacles are a really good example of what we call miroplankton. Their larvae, their eggs and sperm get um, sent out into the plankton. They drift around for a few weeks and then they come back and they settle down in areas where the adults have previously lived. And so this adult balanus, this adult barnacle, is surrounded by little baby barnacles. Now you might have wondered at some time or another, how do barnacles reproduce? Because barnacles actually um, fix themselves to a rock for their entire life. And they are hermaphroditic, meaning they have both male and female sex organs. organs but 
most organisms, in fact, no organism, really sexual organisms, do it with themselves, so to speak. So somehow or another, barnacles have to reproduce with each other. Well, nature, in its ever-present wisdom, has solved that problem by giving barnacles the biggest penis of any organism on Earth relative to its body size. The barnacle penis is long enough to come out this hole and over to a barnacle on really not another rock but quite a distance away so relative to its body length the barnacle has the longest penis of any organism now there's a cocktail party conversation for you here's a crab also a member of the crustaceans and arthropods and what you should be realizing now is all the different kinds of crustaceans and all the different kinds of arthropods that we find in the ocean just like insects being the the most numerous species on in terrestrial biosphere arthropods are also right up there uh, with mollusks as being the most abundant uh, in the marine biosphere and crabs are fascinating for a lot of different reasons maybe partly because you like to eat them but I prefer just watching them Here's a spider crab, also sometimes uh, a relative uh, and very similar looking to the Alaskan king crab. 